Alright, in this video I want to talk about the Laplace transform of discontinuous functions. And in this case we're kind of thinking about heaviside functions. So the Laplace transform of uh, these discontinuous functions, we're going to justify this formula. I'm going to give a proof for it. So the Laplace transform of some function f of t minus c multiplied by h of t minus c. Again, h represents a heaviside function. That's equal to e to the negative c multiplied by s, and then capital F of s, where s is greater than 0. So we're going to justify that formula, and I'm also going to do two examples. So, so if you want to you know, skip the proof and just get to the examples, you know, just jump ahead. But let's prove this, and we'll do two quick examples, or two, uh, maybe not so quick, but two examples nonetheless. So, okay, so we want to prove, we want to show that this Laplace transform of f of t minus c multiplied by h of t minus c, that equals e to the negative c times s multiplied by capital F of s, again where s is greater than zero. So recall just some notation stuff, right? Um, recall that the Laplace transform of just some of the function f of t we abbreviate that capital F of S, so that's our F of S there. And to compute that, recall that we integrate from 0 to infinity. We take e to the negative S multiplied by t, F of t, dt. So just again, just to remind you the, the original Laplace transform. So we're going to use that. This one isn't too bad. It's really just sort of uh, breaking up. Uh, just just doing some integration and breaking things up. So, okay, so the Laplace transform of f of t minus c multiplied by h of t minus c. I'm just going to use the definition, and it says, you know, when you take the Laplace transform, you take whatever functions inside the, 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 the brackets, and you multiply it by e to the negative st. So the Laplace transform of f of t minus c multiplied by h of t minus c, that's just going to be the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative st, again multiplied by everything inside the brackets. So f of t minus c multiplied by h of t minus c, and in this case, again, we're integrating with respect to t. So recall this, this heaviside function, h of t minus c. So there's some value c. Recall that h of t minus c, it's 0 up until you get to the value of c, and then it's equal to 1. So that's our graph of h of t minus c. Well, okay, so what I'm going to do is, since this function's equal to 0 for a long time, I'm just going to break it up at c. So remember, we can chop up integrals, so I'm going to break this up from 0 to c of e to the negative s t f of t minus c multiplied by h of t minus c dt. And then I would have to go, I would have to add from c to infinity of e to the negative s t f of t minus c. So all I'm doing is just breaking up the limits of integration, h of t minus c dt. Well, now I'm just going to use the fact that on this interval from 0 to c, from 0 to c, again, we said that h of t minus c, that's going to be equal to 0. So this whole term is equal to 0, which is going to make, you know, the whole integrand 0, which is going to make this whole integral equal to 0. So we can just drop that part. And then h of t minus c, when we're integrating from, from c to infinity, h of t minus c is going to have a value of 1. Okay, easy enough. Well, that's not too bad then, so this just reduces to... This just reduces to the integral c to infinity of e to the negative st f of t minus c dt. So this is starting to look pretty close you know, this is starting to look pretty close to the, the, the definition of the Laplace transform. But instead of just t, we have this t minus c. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a little change of variable. So I'm going to let, I'm going to use tau. So I'm going to let tau here equal t minus c. So if we take the, the, if we calculate the differential, on the right side, 
the derivative. So t is our variable. We would just have one dt. Again, c is just a constant. And now we're just going to start substituting things in here. Notice if we let tau equal t minus c, I can add c and get that tau plus c equals t. Now we're going to have to do a couple things here. So let's be careful about our limits of integration because I'm going to come back to that in a second. But let's substitute first. So we have e to the negative s multiplied by t. And we said uh, t is going to be equal to tau plus c. And now we're going to have f of, instead of t minus c, we're going to replace that with tau. And that's going to be our new variable, so that's what we're integrating with respect to. Recall that when you have a, a definite integral, or in, okay, in this case it's an improper integral, but we still have these limits of integration. Notice the lower limit of integration, that was when t was equal to c. So if we substitute that in, if we replace our t value with c, we would get that tau equals c minus c, and our new lower limit of integration would turn into zero. Well, if as, as uh, the upper limit of integration, t is approaching infinity, so again, infinity minus some constant, that improper integral is still going to go off to, it's still going to go to infinity. So just be careful about that, you know, if you remember, calculating definite integrals and changing limits of integration. That's all we're doing in this case. So I'm going to break this up again. So let's see, we've got 0 to infinity. Notice this expression, e to the negative s multiplied by tau plus c. I could write that. I mean, if you distribute, that's going to be e to the negative s times tau plus, well, I should have written a minus, that's okay. Uh, plus negative s times c, and we can rewrite that simply as e to the negative s times tau. All of that multiplied by e to the negative s times c, just by using you know properties of exponents there. All right, so if we break that up, we have e to the negative, I'm going to write the s times c, and then we have e to the negative s times tau. We still have f of tau d tau. Well, the e to the negative s times c, we can just treat that like a constant and pull it out front. Again, tau is our variable, so this is from 0 to infinity. e to the negative s times tau, f of tau, d tau. But now we've got, um, we've got what we want because, you know, this, this, this variable tau is just a dummy variable. I wrote t, that should be a tau there, let me be careful. It's just a dummy variable, so now we've got e to the negative s times tau, f of tau, d tau. That's going to be the Laplace transform. So this is going to be e to the negative s times c. It doesn't matter, you know, what variable here that we're using. This is now going to be our Laplace transform, f of s, and that's going to be our proof. Okay, so that's a justification of getting the formula. Let's actually, um, let's actually do two, two concrete examples here. Okay. So let's do two examples. So suppose we want to compute... So let's find... We'll find the Laplace transform of t squared multiplied by h of t minus 1. Okay, so we're going to find this. Now, we want this form, you know, the, the, the form that we need is, it says it's the Laplace transform of f of t minus c multiplied by h of t minus c. Well, so in this case, right, we've got our c value. So our c value in this case is going to be equal to 1. So if we kind of match up this part with this part. And the other thing that we would have is that we would have that t squared. That's going to correspond to our f of t minus c. Okay, so uh, we've got t squared equals f of t minus c. Which in this case, we said that c was equal to 1. So since c is equal to 1, we can just replace that, so we've got t squared equals f of t minus 1. 
Now it's just going to be sort of a, a, just doing again a change of variable to put things in the proper form. So the same thing. In this case, we're going to let tau equal this expression t minus 1. Well, if tau is equal to t minus 1, we can just add 1 to both sides. So tau plus 1 is t. So now what we would have is, using this change of variables, we would have that uh, t squared, we can write that as tau plus 1 squared. That's going to equal f of tau. And what we're going to do now is we're going to compute this Laplace transform of both sides of this equation. So I'm going to write the Laplace transform of f of tau first. We would have to take the Laplace transform of this expression, tau plus 1 squared. Well, if we multiply that out, that's going to be tau squared plus 2 multiplied by tau plus 1. I think this is the most times I've ever said tau um, in a short period of time. And then we're just going to take the Laplace transform of each one of these uh, uh, terms. So we're going to take the Laplace transform of each one of those terms. And all I'm doing now is I'm just using the formula. I'm going to use the, the two formulas. The Laplace transform of a constant, uh, 1, that's just equal to 1 over s. So I'll use that for the last term. And we also have that the Laplace transform of a, a, a variable raised to a power. Again, this is if n is a positive integer. If n is a positive integer, that comes out to be n factorial over s raised to the power of n plus 1. And recall, <clears throat> this is uh, Laplace transform is linear, so we can just do these a piece at a time. So I'm going to take the Laplace transform of tau squared. So we can pull the 2 out front and have the Laplace transform of tau plus the Laplace transform of 1. <clears throat> Okay, so the Laplace transform of tau squared, that's going to give me 2 over s raised to the power of 2 plus 1, or 2 over s to the third. The Laplace transform of tau, in this case, so my exponent is 1, that's just going to give us 1 over s squared. We said the Laplace transform of 1, that's just going to be equal to 1 over s. And again, this is now our function f of s. So we've got that Laplace transform. And now we're done. So it says the Laplace transform of t squared, <clears throat> excuse me, multiplied by h of t minus 1. If we go back to our formula, if we go back to our formula, where did it go? The one I want. Oh, I always lose track of everything. Okay, it's somewhere. Um, and that gives us e to the negative c times s. We said c was equal to 1, so negative 1 times s. And then it says we just multiply that by f of s, which is going to be this function. So we've got 2 over s to the third plus 2 over s squared plus 1 over s. And that's going to be our solution. So that would be our Laplace transform to that, uh, for that first example. Let's do one more example here. Okay, so that's going to be the Laplace transform. Let's do one more example. It's really the same thing. It's just sort of putting things into the same form and doing this change of variable. So let's find the Laplace transform. This time, let's do e to the t plus 1 multiplied by h of t minus 2. Okay, so we're going to find that Laplace transform. Well, again, the form, it's going to be the Laplace transform of f of t minus c. In this case, our, t va or, excuse me, our c value is going to be 2. So we'll have f of t minus 2, and we multiply that by, again, h of t minus 2. Okay, so c is equal to 2. And we're going to do the same thing. So our e of t plus 1, we're going to set that equal to our function f of t minus 2. Exact same trick, we're going to let, we're going to do this change of variable, so tau is going to equal t minus 2, so tau plus 2 is going to be equal to t. So on the left side we would have e raised to the tau plus 2 power 
plus 1 sitting downstairs, we would have f of tau on the right side. Well, we can rewrite e to the tau plus 2. I could rewrite that as e squared multiplied by e to the tau. Again, plus 1 equals f of tau. So again, our function f of s, that's going to be the Laplace transform of f of tau, which is going to be the Laplace transform of this function on the left. So the Laplace transform of e squared multiplied by e to the tau. Again, since uh, well, it's linear, we can break it up, plus the Laplace transform of 1. And again, now, just to, just to remind you, so we're going to use the, the formula that the Laplace transform of e to the a multiplied by t. That's going to be 1 over s minus a. So we're going to use that one on our first term. Okay, so here, you know, think about our, our variable instead of t. Well, we've got tau. That's fine. What's our constant? Our constant's a 1. So our a value is going to have a value of 1. Okay, so the constant out front, e squared is just a constant, so we can pull that out front. We said the Laplace transform of e to the tau, since the, the coefficient is a 1, we would have 1 over s minus 1. And again, this is just using a table. Plus the Laplace transform of 1, that's 1 over s. We actually used that one in our last example. And again, this is our function f of s. So we're done. Now we've got everything that we need. So it says the Laplace transform of e to the t plus 1 multiplied by h of t minus 2. That's going to be equal to e to the negative c times s. So remember, we get e to the negative c times s. We said our c value is equal to the number 2. So we'll have e to the negative 2 multiplied by s. And then we multiply it by our capital F of S, which is the Laplace transform, which was what we just found right here. So we'll just multiply that. We'll have E squared over S minus 1 plus 1 over S. And that'll be our solution. So that'll be our second uh, Laplace transform. So it's kind of interesting. That's why I put all these together, you know, to get the proof right. We did that just little change of variable to sort of make everything work out, make things work out. And that's going to be kind of a common trick that you do uh, in this case. You just basically just do a change of variable, take a Laplace transform, use your tables, uh, multiply that by the e to the negative cs term, and you will be good to go. So, all right, again, I hope that these examples help you out. I'm also going to do an example of finding an inverse Laplace transform of a function. So uh, feel free to uh, stay tuned. I'm going to do it in a different video, but uh, uh, there will definitely be one out there. So take a look at that one, too, if you need to, to check that one out. So, all right, good luck out there.